Hey there, I'm Megan and welcome to the Watchman Homestead. So it's been a minute since we kind of put out a video um, here on YouTube. We do kind of post more regularly on our Facebook page and Instagram and then we do try to post here on our channel in the community tab. So you can always keep an eye on that. Um, but it has just been busy here <laughs> this last month and a half probably. I am sitting underneath a great big white canopy tent because we hosted the Feast of Trumpets this past weekend and it was just so much fun and just so fulfilling and just so beautiful. I think we ended up having like six families come out and join us and spend time with us so it was just really incredible. I will leave a link down in the description below so you can find, I had shared um, on our Facebook page and on my Facebook this little pamphlet that I had made and I ended up passing out and giving to those who came. And I had a lot of messages of people that were wanting a copy of it. So there will be um, a link for that. It is a Canva link. Now this brochure I did create using Constance of a Cosmopolitan Cornbread, a blog that she wrote and then mixing it with a blog that I wrote all about the Feast of Trumpets. So it's really good. Um, so go check it out, feel free. But, we have just had a lot going on here. Um, Easton is currently in a cast. Um, he had an incident and he has a fractured knee. And then our family right now has some sort of cold, eye gunky, just under the weather. So if you wouldn't mind praying for us, that would be great. But I, as everybody knows, you can look around the world right now and see what is going on in the news. You can see what is going on around physically with the hurricane that hit and the things going on in North Carolina, Tennessee, them southern states, and then um, the hurricane that is getting ready to hit Florida. And so my, head, my heart has just been really heavy probably the last week, week and a half. And it's a spiritual heaviness. And I am one who I'm in the Bible all the time, every day, praying, seeking, and I feel like the Lord has just placed it on my spirit to, I don't know, do this video? I don't know if it's meant for somebody or as an encouragement. I don't know, but he does. I don't know who will watch it, all the things, but he knows. And so on my spirit, I have just felt the phrase of walk by faith. Because that is so hard sometimes because we want to see the path that lies ahead. We want to know all of the variables, all of the things, the insides and the outsides of all the details. But sometimes we just don't and we have to walk by faith. And we should be seeking him and seeing what he reveals to us and what he leads us in our lives. So a part of the Feast of Trumpets is it is a Moedim. It is a set-apart time that God gave to his people. You can read all about it in Leviticus 23. But in between the Feast of Trumpets and Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, is the 10 days of awe. It is a time of reflecting. It is a time of repentance. It is a time of fasting and prayer. And that's kind of the season that we're in right now. And so... One of the things that has been laid on my heart is just the wedding feast is coming. And I wrote a whole blog about that this time last year of what that means biblically and what a biblical wedding would look like and how the groom goes away and prepares a place with many rooms for his bride and how while he is gone she is dressing herself and making her garments white and being prepared and being watchful and being wise much like the wise and foolish versions. And that is very much the season that I feel like we are in. To be wise, to be watchful, to keep oil in our lamps by reading the scriptures. So, I just wanted to read a little bit um, of Matthew 24. So Matthew 24, verse 4. Yeshua replied, Watch out, don't let anyone fool you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. You will hear the noise of wars nearby and the news of wars far off. See to it that you do not become frightened. Such things must happen, but the end is yet to come. 
For people will fight each other, nations will fight each other, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various parts of the world. All this is the beginning of the birth pains. At that time you will be arrested and handed over to be punished and be put to death. And people will hate you because of me. And at that time, many people will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. Many false prophets will appear to fool people. And many people's love will grow cold because of the increased distance from the Torah. But whoever holds out to the end will be delivered. Walk by faith, standing strong, because he is faithful. Jump down to verse 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with a tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar. And they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now let each fig tree teach you its lesson. When its branches begin to sprout and its leaves appear, you will know that summer is approaching. In the same way, you will see all of these things. You are to know that the time is near, right at the door. Yes, I tell you that these people will certainly not pass away before all of these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But when that day and hour will come, no one knows. This Feast of Trumpets is a festival that no one knows the day or the hour. You know the time, possibly in the season, by the moon, because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that sliver, that new moon. It goes back to Genesis, when God placed the stars and the sun and the moon in the sky to give us the times and seasons. But no one knows. Not the angels in heaven, not the Son, only the Father. For the Son of Man's coming will be just as in the days of Noah. Back then before the flood, people were eating and drinking, taking wives and becoming wives, right up until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they didn't know what was happening until the flood came and swept them all away. It will be just like that when the Son of Man comes. Now I'm not saying there's a certain time or day and I know all, because I don't. I am broken and have my own struggles, my own sins, just like you. But I feel in my spirit, and I have for a while, that the shofars are being sounded. That the war drums are being beaten. That the horse is getting ready to be ridden by Yeshua. Can read all about it in Revelation. That this is the time to make sure that you're right in your spirit. That you know where your focus is. That you're not being distracted by the world. Not looking to fill your heart with things that can't fill it. Because only God can. Not chasing after possessions and desires because they're temporary. You can't take them with you. To teach our children in the way that they should go is the Shema, it's Deuteronomy 6. To help teach the next generation, to help teach our friends, our family, to be mindful of this season that we're in, to seek Him out daily. Christy Jordan has a phrase, she has the Seeking Scripture podcast of book open, eyes on him. Because when you're in that stance and that position, you can't be distracted by the world. 
because your focus is him. And it is a time to prepare, a time to continue sharing the gospel, a time to be a light for others. Because as Yeshua said, and many, many people's love will grow cold because of the increased distance of the Torah. The Torah is the first five books of the Bible. It's the commandments and the word of God. It's his desires for us as his people. It's the examples on how to love our neighbor and how God desires to be loved. The two greatest commandments hang on them. That's Matthew 22, verse 40. Just want to remind you that whatever the season is that you're going through, whatever the struggle, whatever the blessings, the joy, it's temporary. But his word is forever, never ending. He's El Roy, the God who sees and he sees you. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and he provides for you. He created the details of the finger, fingerprints on each of your fingers and your toes. He knows the number of hair on your head, and he collects your tears and keeps them in a bottle because they're so precious to him, because you matter to him. I would just like to wrap all of this up in a prayer. So if you wouldn't mind joining me. Abba Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to create this video. That you just planted a seed. Father, that you go before this individual or individuals who are watching this video. Father, that you know the things that are going on in their lives. Abba, that you just provide for them in ways that only you can provide. That you heal them in only ways that you can provide healing. That you just renew and restore them. Father, we just ask that you go before those that are affected right now by the chaos of this world. Father, that they see your blessing in the midst of the storm. Father, that you calm the storm. That your peace and your presence is palpable that they just lean into you and that you are their high tower. That you are their shield, their rock, their fortress. Abba, I just place a hedge of protection around this individual and their family. Ephesians 6, Father, that they armor up just as our family armors up. That we do not battle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and the principalities of this world. Father, that you are already ahead of this lovely individual. Father, I just pray blessings over them. That they see you, that they seek you out. And when they do, they find you in a way that only you can provide. I just ask these things in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. If you have any prayer requests, feel free to drop them down below. But I'll leave you with that. May Adonai bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he give you his shalom.